You are known by the fruit. Listen to me. You are known by the fruit that you bear. You can have title. You can have position. You can have all kinds of things. You can have this image of which you want to project. But the truth is you will be known by the fruit you bear. You'll be recognized by the fruit that you bear. When I look in my own life, sometimes I'm a little disappointed with my fruit. How about you? See, what I find is, now let me, let me read this line um, just in prayer time. I believe that the Spirit of God, that this line is, is, is from the, the Lord. You can measure it and, and just judge it and see for yourself. We're going to be talking about the fruit of the Spirit. I think that there are two categories in which God wants us to bear fruit. One is in serving, that we live a fruitful life in serving and blessing and helping and reaching out to see people saved and sharing Christ. And then the other area, the other category, is literally living in the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. We'll read that. We were there last week. And so this is the line. The Spirit of God is developing the nature or the character of God in me. Now I want you to think about that. When we look at the fruit of the Spirit, and, and, and if you will turn and uh, look here at John 10.10, 10, the thief comes not but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. That's his mission. Jesus identifies two completely different missions here. But Jesus being said, but I am come. Everybody say, he came. And here's what he came, so that you could have life. And so that you can have that life, that word, that Greek word, zoe, life in abundance, life as God has it. But what I find, uh, you see, life would be so much easier if I could control the thermostat. How many other control freaks are here? See, I want to control the environment. How many of y'all Goldilocks believers are here today, Right? I don't want my porridge too hot or too cold. I don't want my bed too soft or too hard. I want it, what? Just right. Climate control. Comfort control. But how many of y'all know we don't have the thermostat for every situation, circumstance, and those people. Those people around us. Right? They just do things that tick me off sometimes. And the fruit of the Spirit. I can't control everything that's going on out there, so I need to make sure I've got a dial inside here. Huh? So, in living with my past, uh, there's things I can't change. Things I wish I would have, could have, should have. Anybody say amen? But that's come and gone. Forgive it. Get past it. He bore the shame. I like that one line, that... Shame that he bore was his ransom, man. He paid the price. Some of you are dealing with today. You're living with today. It, it, you, you're obsessing about what you've got going on right now. I've got this going on, uh, golly. And it's like we're doing God a favor by working him in because uh, I'm, I'm the kind of guy that I, I'm busy about going on vacation even. How about you? I mean, I'll get... See, th this thing's not about being busy it's about bearing fruit. I mean, I know there's a difference, right? Not just about being busy. And so when I'm, when I'm dealing with the stuff of today, and I, my mind begins, my nature, my old human nature, my fallen nature, this carnal nature, not the Spirit of God, not the, not the born again. When I was born again, all things become new. But sometimes I keep thinking like the old. How about you? I, I, I slip back into that, those, those ways of, of thinking and, and then all of a sudden I can't control that climate. It's too hot or it's too cold. The porridge is too hard. The bed is too soft or too hard. It's, and, and so peace goes out the window. I know me pretty good. I've, 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 I've come to terms with looking at me nobody clutch your chest when I start doing some of these things about my own self-awareness right here. I'm impatient. <laughs> nobody else here suffers from that, I'm sure. But in case you do, Im impatient. This is self-awareness. 
This is living with me. This is not just living in the past. It was part of my past. Sometimes it's part of my now. And it's part of my now knowing that I have the tendencies to be impatient. Impatience, God's way is better. We just sang about it. God's way is better. My way is impatient. My way is stubborn. Listen, if you want to see something that is totally a recipe for disaster, be stubborn and be impatient. It's like, I know I'm going down the wrong road, but I'm going to do it anyway, and I'm going fast. <laughs> right? Stubborn, impatient. Those things lead us to make really poor decisions. Impatience gets stressed. It gets angry. See, this is me. I'm not just type A. It's like A, 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 A. And then I look at these other people, and they're not like type B. They're like type Z. I don't even know who they, what planet they came from. You know, it's like I, I envy them. I'm, I'm stressed about going on vacation and relaxing. It's like we've got to do this, we've got to do this, we've got to do this, and we've got to take care of that, and take care of this, and this, and this, right here. And other people just sitting back, ah, okay, sirrah, sirrah, whatever. <sighs> Breathing. Did you notice the flowers? No, I didn't notice the flowers. I'm driving too fast. <laughs> there were flowers, right? So I don't know which pool you pull from. And so, uh, how many of y'all know there's a difference in a bulldozer and a butter knife? Huh? There's a difference in a bulldozer and a butter knife. Both of them will cut things and move things and smear things and all that right there. But see that. <laughs> and, and so you got bulldozer people. You got the butter knife people. They're smooth. But they're stressed too, man. They're, 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 their nature is more like, see, they're just sneaky about it. <laughs> they're looking all smooth, but there ain't nothing smooth about it. They're... they're it is charming on everything, but on the inside, man, they are one hot mess. They are a wreck. And then you got the uh, wet noodle bunch. Bulldozers, butter knives, and wet noodles. I don't know where all those come from, but it's just kind of my way of looking at, at some things. I, I heard one guy talk about, well, there's sheep, there's wolves, there's sheep dogs, and then there's shepherds, and I, ah, that, you know, that sounds biblical and all that, but... There's just this wet noodle crowd, man. They can't stand up for anything. They're always the victim. Poor me. They just melt down at everything. The first sign of trouble, you know. And Knowing who you are. Understanding, listen to me. We all have weaknesses. We all have flaws, faults, and deficiencies. The important thing is to know who you are because the enemy's going to try and use those. He's, gotta, he's, he's going to try to find a way. If he's going to... If he's going to come, everybody say the thief comes. So we're not going to focus on him. We're going to focus on life and life abundantly. But understand, the thief comes, and when he's come, he looks for these areas of weakness. He has studied. He knows. And so you know where he always touches me? In the areas of impatience or my stubbornness. He, I am flawed in my carnal nature. But how many of y'all know God gave us a different nature? The Spirit of God is working to develop the character and the nature of God in me. And when I work in alignment with that, it goes a lot better. Let's go to Galatians chapter 5. Let's go to Galatians chapter 5, and we're going to talk about the Spirit of God and Him working in us, and we're just going to look at the fruit of the Spirit today. In Galatians chapter 5, and let's start at verse 16. Galatians 5, 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Two different places to walk. Two different paths right here. One is the fleshly path. The other is the spirit path. How I many all have walked both? Uh, sometimes you're walking in the median, you know. It's amazing how quickly we can be in the spirit and back into the flesh sometimes, right? The apostle Peter He's hearing from God. Jesus asked the question and said, Who do men say that I am? Peter's response is, Well, you're the Christ. You're the Son of the living God. Some say you're alive, Jeremiah, one of the prophets, but that's not who you are. You're the, you're the Son of the living God. And he got it right. Jesus said, Flesh and blood's not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. He's in the Spirit. He's got the right answer. He's, he's, he's plugged in. 
And in just a few verses, Jesus is saying, I'm going to go away and die. And Peter stands up and says, no, that ain't happening. Right? And it's like a complete about faith. It's amazing to me how quickly sometimes I can step out of the things of God and right back into my old nature. Hmm? But the more I begin to understand me, and I can begin to see how God wants to develop and to form himself in, 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 in my heart and in my life. Um, before we read about the fruit of the Spirit, let's, let's pick up... Um, I want to, let's look at Galatians chapter 4. Before we read Galatians 5, 16 about the fruit of the Spirit, let's read Galatians chapter 4 and verse 19, Carry Galatians 4 and uh, verse 19. The Apostle Paul is teaching believers. Matter of fact, he looks at them as though, these Galatian believers, as though he is their spiritual father. He says, my children, right? And, and then... Now listen, listen to the wording in this right here. We're just going to pick up this one verse. My little children of whom I travail in birth again. Everybody say again. Again. We've been here before. I'm travailing in birth. How many of y'all know we have been born again? You're going to heaven. Are you going to go to heaven with peace or impatience? There's a difference in how we live our life. I can't control the thermostat of everything that's going on out here, but thank God with the power of the Holy Spirit. How many of all greater is He that's in us? And so when we learn to draw... See, this series we're talking about is about the power of His presence, and specifically what we're talking about now is His presence within us. His indwelling presence. Greater is He that's in us. And when I can learn to draw from the power of His presence that's in me, I can walk in much greater victory with all of these things out here that come uninvited, unsolicited, but they knock on the door and get in your face. And I don't have to give my peace away. I don't have to give my joy away. I don't have to give my love. I don't have to surrender self-control. Amen? Because I don't like what happens in me or to me when I do those things. How about you? But see, I've got, to, I've, I've got to be aware of some things. Just because I've been born again. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are made new. I can quote you the scripture. It's a lot easier for me to preach it on Sunday than it is to live it on Monday. Have you ever had one of those days? I mean, I've ever had one of those weeks. Some of you looking over at your spouse saying, I've had one of those lives, right? How do we live in victory? Now listen to me. How do we live in that abundant life? Because there's a ton of things that the enemy wants to throw at you to steal that from you. And so it's not just about being able to gain that victory. But it's being able to protect that victory once you have it. To walk in that victory. And so today is about just some self-awareness and inventorying you. You can live with your past. You can live with the stuff that's going on. Some living in fear and dread of tomorrow, the future. Those three areas, right? Living with the past. Living with the here and now. Living with the tomorrow. Living with yourself. You can get past yesterday. You can get over today, and you don't have to worry about tomorrow till it gets here, but you will have to live with you today. Which one of you do you choose to live with? He said, my little children of whom I travail in birth again, until what? Christ be formed in you. In other words, they had been at one place or at one level, and somehow or another... We've stepped back. We've moved away from that. How many of y'all have ever, kind of like the course we sang earlier, I kind of forgot where I left me. I'm not exactly where, I'm not even sure who I am right now. When I lose patience, the power of patience. Let's just talk about this one. I'll just pick on DL on this one right here. Here's one that I've heard screamed in my ears by my own spirit and, and by the knowledge of the Word of God. In your patience, you possess your soul. Right? Right? 
Word of God, in your patience. So if we follow this chain reaction, if I lose my patience, I'm going to do things that may take me to a place I don't want to be. In your patience, you possess your soul. So when I get impatient, I say things, I do. Isn't it amazing how we always hurt the people that are closest to us first? Mm Hmm? Till Christ be formed in you. Paul's looking at these Galatian believers. He loves them. He calls them children. He's in travail. He's in intercessory prayer. A spiritual travail. A spiritual birth. Oh God. What I'm seeing in their life is not what you have planned for them. Oh God. What I hear out of their mouth is not what you have planned for them. You have something much better for them. And we prayed, we travailed until that was birthed in their life at one time. But it's gone. Oh God, could it, could it be again? And he writes them and tells them, I'm in travail over you. I'm in intercession over you. Till Christ, listen to me, formed in you. And then the devil comes to try and steal that away. Which, which nature? See, I, I know my nature, this, this carnal man... I've lived with him a long time, but I really want us to go to Galatians 5 now, and we'll we'll read that. So next chapter, Galatians 5, starting at verse 16. This I say, then walk in the Spirit, and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Two different mindsets, two different approaches, two different paths. The flesh lusts against the Spirit, the Spirit against the flesh. These two are, everybody say contrary. They're contrary. One another, listen to this, so you cannot do the things that you would. The little cartoons depicted as the little devil on one shoulder and the little angel on the other shoulder and they're whispering in the ear. I mean, I know that's kind of almost a pretty fair analogy of that sometimes. Uh, which one are you listening to? Which, which one are you following? Now, it begins to teach us about victory, but if you be led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. Now, the works of the flesh will manifest, which are these? And so he starts talking about all of this carnal-mindedness, this, this, this man's thinking. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedition, heresy, envy, drunkenness, murder, revelings, and the such like of which I tell you before, as I've told you also in time past. I've told you this before. I'm reminding you of this. He's saying, they which do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Everybody say, but, everybody say, but the fruit. But the fruit. Now see, this is what we're looking for. When we talk about the nature of God, when we talk about the character of God, the person of God, until Christ be formed in you, if Christ is formed in me, then how does that... If I'm truly in the vine, I'm a branch, and I'm bearing fruit from what the vine of Christ, the Christ vine, everybody say the Christ vine. If, if, if I'm bearing fruit, I'm this branch that's, that's hooked into the Christ vine, what does that fruit look like? What is it? Because you're going to be known by your fruit. Not just your name, not just your position or just your title, but by your fruit, the fruit of the Spirit. If I say the fruit of the Spirit... So if I'm living in the Spirit, I'm walking in the Spirit, and I'm being led by the Spirit, how many all know I should be able to expect the fruit of the Spirit to be growing in my life? The Spirit of God is developing the character and the nature of God in me, in you. Everybody say, in us. Christ formed in us. Love, joy, peace. Anybody had too much peace this week? Anybody lose control of the control? Anybody have a situation, a circumstance, someone? Was it one of those weeks? Uh, Peace, long-suffering. You know what long-suffering is? You all know what the the biblical definition of long-suffering? Don't miss this now. It means to suffer a long time. 
Oh, I just love the thought of that. Hallelujah. I want that one, Jesus. Let me grow, let me grow truckloads. I don't pray for that one. First of all, I'm too impatient. Second of all, right? Long suffering. Gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, or self control. Against such there is no law. When it says there is no law, what that means is law sets boundaries, perimeters. And so what he's saying to us, he said, if you would like, we will grow the fruit of the Spirit in your life without measure. There's no boundary. There's no, <laughs> there's no limitations to the, to the amount of fruit. How much love you want to walk in? How much joy you want to walk in? Nine fruit that are listed right here. And, and I'm not going to get to cover as much as I would like to today. But I want you to look this week... And inventory you. Inventory your own emotional life. What happens whenever these things get stolen from us? The love, the joy, the peace. Pastor Scott was talking about the joy of the Lord. Nehemiah 8 and 10. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And so how are you going to go through life not being able to control all of the climate that is around you. Things are going to come. People are going to say. People are going to do. People are going to disappoint. People are going to, right? They're going to talk. They're going to, whatever. And what we do so often, we get so caught up in being so busy. I set this stool up here in early service. Um, I've been trying to focus on just relaxing a little on the inside. The outside's been really, really busy. How many of y'all know you can be outside, really busy on the outside? you got stuff to take care of, and I know you do. But that don't mean that you can't do it without, you don't have to do it without joy and without peace. Um, little sister Ruth Worth, I'll come over here. Ruth was here in early service, her and Mr. Jack. She sits right here in early service, and, and she's one of those sweet, I don't know, uh, exactly what her years on this earth is, but she's qualified to be in grandma status and uh, for, for DL. And she writes Marsh and I little encouraging notes and cards on, on a really regular basis. And this past week, uh, last Sunday, she wrote one. We got it in the mail. And, uh, and, and, and basically, Grandma Worth was telling me, you need to chill out, DL. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> What are you going to say to that, right? I mean, that's, you know, I, I can accept those kinds of things, especially from people who love me, and I know that they love me, right? How many of y'all have a hard time taking advice from somebody? Hey, I don't know why they're saying that. I don't know either why they'd be saying that. Listen to your tone, right? I don't know why they'd be saying that. What do you mean I need to chill out? I'm perfectly happy. <laughs> we can tell, right? And just in a very loving and very kind way, she's just saying, listen, you know, you need to let the Lord fight some of these battles. You need to quit trying to fix everything and everybody, and you need to just breathe a little. And uh, I'll tell you the whole story how this went down. We got the letter, and I didn't know who it was from, and Marsh said, I've got a little letter here for us. Sometimes I get letters I really don't want to hear from people I really don't. Hmm? Uh, sometimes... And they've got opinions on those kind of things. And I said, is it, is it one of those? Because if it is, I just don't want to hear it. She said, I've had one of those weeks. All right, I'll, just, I'll, I'll put that out there for you. And so it's been one of those things where in my prayer time, and I'm battling to hold on to this character of God, this nature of God, this fruit of the Spirit that I know God's trying to develop in me. And so we've got this here. And... and, 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 and uh, she didn't even read it to me. She said, you're not in a place where you need to hear it just yet. <laughs> I have a hair trigger, folks, and she knows it, and so do I. This is true. This is our week this past week. I don't know. This we got the letter, I don't know, Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, somewhere along in there. She didn't even tell me necessarily who it was from on, on the whole thing right there. But it was one of those things where... 
a, a good wife. She, she laid it in on where I study, where my Bible is and where this book is. And, and, and so I finally got up the courage. Listen, the last thing I need is somebody else to critique me, criticize, to do that. I am war. I am tired. Anybody ever been there, right? Just exhausted and worn out. Just one of those things right there. And, and uh, uh, all right, I finally summoned the courage to read it. And it's Grandma Worth. And she's given me really good advice about the fruit of the Spirit. About walking in love and about walking in joy and peace. And, and um, so these notes coming off of Grandma's letter. All right, now, so uh, let's read the rest of this. How do, we, how do we get to these fruit of the Spirit? And then, uh, Marsh, if you want to come, we're going to read a, another verse or two and then we'll be done. How do we get to these? They that are Christ have what crucified the flesh. Does that sound enjoyable to you? To crucify the flesh? But didn't Jesus say the, 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 the way, if any man's going to come after me, he needs to do what? Deny self? Take up his cross and follow. And, and, and so to live life and to live life abundantly, how do we get there? And he talks about, so here's how we get there. We have to crucify this old man. Matter of fact, the Apostle Paul said this about himself. He said, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ who lives in me. Christ formed in me. And so he comes to a place where his identity is so wrapped up in this fruit of the Spirit that he's bearing this fruit. How many of all want to walk in love this week? How many of all want to walk in joy? Let's make it really simple. You want to walk in peace. You want to, we want to, these things have to grow. They have to be put into an environment where they can be nurtured and fed. And they can be literally intentionally uh, there's some things that we have to prune sometimes. Amen? Pruning. We won't have time again to talk about all this right here, but you're, you're sharp. You know, what we're, you know what we're talking about. Now, verse 25. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. How are you going to live? How are you going to walk? Romans 8 and 1. We read this last week. I just want to hit it again real quickly. There's therefore now no condemnation of which them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. Again, how are you going to walk? Who's leading you? Where are you going to live at? Live in the Spirit or live in the flesh? The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from what? The law of sin and death. I was there, but I'm free from that. We just, all over our nation, spent a ton of... A ton of time and resource to celebrate freedom. Amen? How many of y'all thankful for America? Uh, me too. Me too. I love living in America. I think it's, there's no other country I want to live in. Thank God for America. Now, I want to define freedom. I want to share this with you again. We, 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 we've, we've shared this before and worked off of this. Freedom is not the right to do whatever you want to do. It's the ability to do what is right. Listen to me. Even when everything else is wrong. I'll say it again. Freedom is not the right to do whatever you want to do. It's the ability to do what's right. Even when everything else is wrong. You know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Whom the Son set free is free indeed. But are you truly free? Or are we in captivity to all this other stuff? We come back to Romans chapter 8. Look at, look at this verse real quickly. 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 2. It says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace multiplied. How many of y'all would like to have grace and peace multiplied this week? It's through knowledge, but it is applied knowledge. It, it, it can't just be in head knowledge, but it's in knowledge that you're living in and that you're walking out. Verse 3 says, according as His divine power, everybody say divine. This is not in our own power, in our own strength. Yet how many of us are trying to do it? Right? 
and it's in our own way, your nature, your character, maybe your type A or your type Z or somewhere in between, according as His divine power hath given unto us all things, hath, past tense, all things, everything, but we still seems like we're trying to get. It seems like sometimes I catch myself spending weeks trying to climb the hill. Anybody else? Huh? That's, that, that's up, it's up, it's climb, it's climb, it's climb. And always trying to get, rather than being able to come at peace with some of this stuff and say, God, you already sent your son and he climbed the hill for me. Hmm? He's given me everything that I need that pertains to life. Everybody say life. That's, this is here and right now. And godliness, my spiritual life. Through the knowledge of him that's called us to glory and virtue. That's what we're called to. To glory, to honor, to integrity. When I lose my patience, I compromise my integrity. Anybody say amen? amen. I'm called to strength, but when I lose my patience, I become very weak. It's the old man and I've given in to my feelings, to my emotions. I've given away my power. My spiritual God-given power. How do we walk in this? Walking in the promises of God. Walking in the Spirit of God. Learning how to crucify the flesh and say, Nope. Dear God, I need to filter some days. How about you? Huh? Just being honest. Right? Right? And here's what I'd like to say. Well, it's just the way I am. Maybe the way you are, it's not the way God intended for you. Huh? God's got something better. His way really is better. Now then, whereby, verse 4, let's go to verse 4. Whereby are given unto us, I love these words right here. Everybody say, exceeding great and precious. <laughs> I love those words. Exceeding great and precious promises that by these, now listen to me, that by these you can do what? Be partakers of the divine nature. I can take part in the divine nature. Not DL's old fallen nature, my old carnal nature, my old sinful nature, my old way of thinking. I can step plumb over here 180 degrees, a million miles away from that, and I can walk in the divine nature because the Spirit of God is developing the character, the person, the nature of God in me. How about you, see? That's what he's doing. But if I resist that, if I just follow after my flesh, see, I can't do the things that I would do. Christ being formed in me won't let me do the things. I can't say the things I can't, and I shouldn't. Huh? No life in those things. And so, that divine nature, it lets us escape the corruption that's in the world. Escape. Free. Free. I'm no longer in bondage to all this. Romans 8. I'm going to finish right here. I'm going to get one other line. Uh, verse 5. Let's go to verse 5. Carry. Skip on down. For they that are in the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. The carnal mind, it's an enmity against God. It's not subject to the law of God, neither can be. They that are in the flesh can't please God. Verse 9, you're not in the flesh but in the Spirit. So be the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. If Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life. The Spirit's life. Everybody say the Spirit's life. See, so that's where we find life and life abundantly. Protect that. Protect that. Live in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. Be led of the Spirit. Bear the fruit of the Spirit. God's way. Pastor Scott was talking about verse 11 just a minute ago. But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies. Everybody say mortal. That's this one right here. This is the one that's going to die. This... It'll quicken. It'll make alive. God just doing something on the inside of this mortal being. He'll quicken your mortal bodies by what? His spirit that dwells in you. Therefore, my brethren, not debtors. 
Not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you'll die. But through the Spirit, you mortify. You put to death the deeds of the body, you'll live. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of the children of God. And I read this because we're going to pick up here next week. Do not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. You've received the spirit of adoption. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Everybody say, Daddy. That word Abba is a term of endearment. It's Daddy. My dearest, dearest Daddy. That's my dad. I'm an heir, a joint heir. Spirit bears witness. Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. If children, then we're heirs. So let's read one more verse. And then I am done. This is the closing. 1 Peter 3, 8. <coughs> Finally, be all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren. Be pitiful, be courteous. be courteous. In other words, have pity, have mercy on others. Be courteous. Don't we live in quite a world? Boy, just common courtesy is gone in this world anymore, seems like, huh? It's like people are hyper. What can you do that doesn't offend somebody anymore? Right? Good Lord, help us. Not rendering evil for evil, or railing for railing. See, that's what the old man wants to do. That's what I'd like to render. That's what I'd like to return. Right? Railing for railing. You want to rail on me, I'll rail on you. Right? Evil for evil. Well, let's trade her off right here. But contrary. Everybody say contrary. Contrary wise, blessing. They done evil. You render blessing. Mm -hmm. They railed on you. I was in no mood to have another one of those letters. You ever just been wore down, not just even physically, but spiritually and emotionally too? Just exhausted. Now here's where I want us to get to. Here's what I want you to leave with today. Verse 10. Verse 10. He that will love life. Everybody say life. This good life. This life more abundantly. He that will love life and see good days. Anybody say I vote for that. that that'd be me. I, I'm, I'm there. Alright here's what we do. You get a filter. You refrain your tongue. Huh? Refrain your tongue from evil. His lips that they speak, no guile. Let him eschew evil. In other words, turn your back on it. Don't do it. Let him do good. Verse 11. Let him seek peace and ensue it. Pursue it with all that's in you. Verse 12. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. His ears open to the prayers. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Who is he that will harm you? If you be followers of those, which is good. Hmm. And if you suffer for righteousness sake, happy are you. Freedom is the ability to do what's right even when everything's going wrong. Huh? Even when you're suffering because you're full of what? Long suffering. Been through it, been there a while. Let's stand. Let's stand. And if you suffer for righteousness sake, happier you be not afraid. Their terror needs to be troubled. Sanctify the Lord. Everybody say sanctify the Lord. Mm. That means to set Him apart. Where at? Sanctify the Lord God in your heart. In your, set God apart in your heart. You, you, you set Him apart in this the Spirit of God is developing that divine nature, the divine character of God in me. And if I'm truly plugged into that vine, that Christ vine, everything, the Christ roots are drawing up all of the nutrients, all of that I need to produce fruit in my life coming up through the Christ roots. What's growing out on the ends of these limbs is love and joy and peace, long-suffering, and gentleness, and goodness, and meekness.
but if I'm drawing from something else. So grace and peace be multiplied. From a sermon several years ago that we don't own grace. Grace multiplied. Grace will let you do what you thought you could never do. Grace will get you through what you didn't think you could get through. Grace will make you into who you never dreamed you could be. Grace will take you where you never thought you could ever go. And grace will let you possess what you thought you would never even hold. Grace multiplied to you, church. Peace multiplied to you. You got to live with you this week. Which you, the one that Christ is forming in us, or the other you. I've lived with the other me. I don't care much about him. He's not a he's kind of a buzzkill. That guy's kind of a I'd rather live with the one that God's making. Father God, we love you. So we bow before you on this day. Free men and free women. Free. In this nation, that freedom says we have certain rights. But Lord God, in the spirit, freedom's not about all of those rights. Freedom is truly about the ability to do what's right. Even when things are going so wrong. It's been one of those days. It's been one of those. But we have, we have the fruit of the Spirit growing in us. I don't have to lose my patience with every little thing that comes along. I don't have to get stressed out about everything. That comes. I don't have to be angry about. I don't have to be disappointed or depressed. Lord God, that's one type. Another person may say, I, I feel so inferior to everyone else. I'm so insecure. I'm not sure anyone loves me or likes me. I, I need to do what's right so that they will approve of me, so that I can have value or I can have worth. I'm a, I'm a people pleaser. God, what we want to do is we want to please you. We just want to walk in your spirit, be led of your spirit. To see your spirit grow and that our lives would come into fruition. And when we live our life out, when we live our days out, our family and in our community, Lord God, people will know us by the fruit we bear. And they can say, there's a, there's a person who's really kind, really giving. I see the fruit of God. I see the nature, the character of their heavenly Father in them. So, Lord God, we thank you for peace today. Now listen to me. We set these things aside. I'm going to speak to some hearts. We set aside anxiety. Anxiousness, worry, and stress, and fear. We set aside that and we, we're growing peace instead. We set aside anger. We set aside wrath and revenge. And we speak joy in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. We speak peace. We speak joy. It's who you've created us to be in Jesus' name. Father God, we're going to just rest in you. Here's our prayer. That we might love life. Anybody in agreement with that? Right? Love life and what? See good days. Love life and see good days. Don't mean that everything comes along is going to be good. It just means we can have a good day instead. Thank you, Lord God, for a good life.
good days. Dismiss us now in your love, in your peace, in your joy. Fruit growing in our lives. Your spirit producing, developing your nature, God. Your character in us. Thank you in Jesus' name. Everybody agreed and said amen. God bless. We love you. And go out there and just act like a bunch of fruits, okay? It's, it's going to be who you are in Jesus' name. Happy 4th to all of you. Enjoy your freedom. You are free to do what is right.